Hello, and today we're looking at how materials cycle. And we have four objectives for this, and this is to describe four different cycles. The water cycle, the carbon cycle, oxygen cycle, and the nitrogen cycle. Here's something that you may find interesting. Look closely. You notice, this is called an echopod. You notice there's there are some th oh, there's, uh, shrimp swimming around in there. There are actually three of them. If you look, uh, let's see, right over here, you may notice a little plant coming off of this dead coral. And there's plenty of microscopic plants in there. The most of the visible stuff disappeared. And this is sealed shut. I've never opened it in over the two years I've had it because I cannot open it. If I do open it, then I sort of destroy it. So these shrimp have been living inside of here for over two years. No substance. Nothing can get in. Nothing can get out. Or well, one thing actually can get in. That one thing is energy. Light comes in, and it provides the energy for photosynthesis of the plants in here, which are now mostly microscopic. The shrimp that are in here eat the plants, and their decomposers, the bacteria that will eat the any of the dead algae, any of the dead decomposers, and also the waste from the from the shrimp, and the uh, and also the shrimp, in addition to eating the plants, also eat the bacteria too. So it's a closed system; everything cycles except for the energy. So, does this equipod remind you of anything? Hopefully it reminds you of the Earth. And anything to keep in mind here is that light energy is sold to enter the equipod. Everything else has to cycle. Just be reused. Just like on the Earth. You have sunlight coming down, and there's nothing short of things like comets and asteroids that come down here. So in other words, the oxygen that an oxygen molecule in your lungs, one's once in Abraham Lincoln's lungs, as well as a T-Rex. And the water that you drink has been drunk and peed countless of times by countless of people and animals. You have a diagram of the water cycle, and you basically have to know it. The uh, most of the stuff you have to know though for earth science. The main thing which I've seen a lot of stuff on which you may not be familiar with that you learned in junior high elementary school is transpiration. And at the bottom of every of every week, you'll find stomata. Stomata are air holes with some guard cells around it which open and close them. And they allow for gas exchange. And while that occurs, plenty of water also escapes through the stomata. And we'll get more into how it opens and closes later in the year when we talk about negative feedback. So probably sometime in the winter. Here's the oxygen cycle. And the thing you need to know about that is that autotrophs, and what autotrophs are, they are things that make their own food. They produce oxygen with photosynthesis. And the photosynthesis also takes the carbon dioxide, which it contains two oxygen atoms, into a biological form of sugar. And consumers, like us, eat this biological oxygen into our food. And many organisms, like plants and like us, also take um, atmospheric oxygen or two and then convert it into carbon dioxide. And most organisms, like us, release carbon dioxide as a waste. That brings us to the carbon cycle. And autotrophs turn carbon dioxide into organic carbon through photosynthesis. We'll go into details on photosynthesis in another unit. Um, heterotrophs get their carbon through food. Um, you think of all the carbs that we eat, 
And actually, not just carbs contain carbon, but also proteins and everything else. Um, we have carbon-based life forms because most of our molecules contain carbon. Heterotrophs, like us, we get our carbon through food. All organisms turn organic carbon into carbon dioxide through respiration. And respiration, by the way, is not the same as we do. It's basically us getting energy from our food. It's not. Breathing is something else, even though it's still called respiration. Things, even things that don't breathe will go through respiration. Undecayed organic matter may fossilize and they will temporarily leave the cycle. They're just temporary to last for millions, even billions of years. And burning the fossil fuels will return that carbon to the cycle. Now, the nitrogen cycle is uh, something that you may not have learned earlier. And that 80% of the air that we breathe is nitrogen, N2. And you can't use it. We just simply don't have the capability of turning it into what we need. Um, now, the picture you see here are of uh, a legend like a peanut. And on those roots, you see these nodules. You can see quite a few of them over here. And those nodules contain bacteria. And there's a mutualistic relationship. We'll explain that mutualistic later. It's also symbiosis. Where both uh, organisms help each other. The bacteria help the plants, and the plants help the bacteria. And one way the bacteria help the plants is that they take that gaseous nitrogen and they turn it into an organic nitrogen that organisms can use. And there are salt there are soil bacteria that do the same. Also when we fertilize our fields, what we are doing is we are putting nitrogen into the soil so that plants can use it. And um, today we're actually able to chemically make fertilizer by taking nitrogen in the air and turn into ammonia and then turn that ammonia into um, fertilizer. And here's the whole nitrogen cycle. And the main points are that plants absorb nitrogen through the roots and animals then eat that nitrogen in their food. And the nitrogen is a chief component of proteins. And the decomposers will then return the nitrogen from waste and dead organisms to the soil. Um, urine basically is nitro uh, nitrogen waste. And some soil bacteria will return organic nitrogen into atmospheric nitrogen or N2. And here are some closing questions. Number one, what does not cycle? Number two, describe transpiration. Number three, what does photosynthesis do? And number four, what occurs in the nodules of nitrogen leaks? Okay, and that's uh, the end of this podcast, and we're going to have a bit of a project to do with this in class.